Today I want to tell you the story about the office. How we found the office, where the office is, what we were going to do with the office, what the unfulfilled dreams of the office are going to be, and of course, why we're letting go of the office. Because apparently, I haven't done a very good job of letting you know that this is even happening. So yeah, I'm going to correct for that right now. And we're going to start by showing you like where, where the office actually is. For a little bit of context, I got an office because, well, we needed space. Mostly for conversations, to be able to talk, to be able to plan, to be able to just leave stuff out and make grand plans for our future, and the adventures that we would go on. I also needed space to store some stuff. Kate needed room to be able to work and, you know, send postcards and stickers and all the random stuff that she was sending out for me. And it just made sense. And it still makes sense. It's been great, to be honest, having the office, which is behind me now. If you couldn't tell that I'm racing away from it to give you a little bit more context. It was a little bit of a game changer. It helped a lot, especially in the team building department. We really felt more like a team to have a space to go where we could work meet, talk, drink coffee, and just not worry about the world for a little bit. Because, believe it or not, working in coffee shops in Paris is kind of complicated. Something I talked about a lot back in the day when I had to do it more often and something I might end up having to talk about again more here in the future. Like any good story, mine begins at home. And my home here, traditionally, has been the Peloton Cafe. Now, if you're gonna be near a home base that's in a place like the Marais, uh, it's gonna be kind of challenging, both because it's a hot spot for real estate and kind of expensive. We were looking around all over the city just to see what we could find, and options weren't necessarily that forthcoming. Believe it or not, you know, Paris is kind of expensive. And we did a lot of research. We went to a bunch of different co-working spaces. We looked at renting desks and offices. We looked at very, like, trying to find an actual lease. Finding an actual lease in Paris, though, is next to impossible because you have to buy the lease. It's one of the crazier elements of life in the city. If you have a lease in one of these retail spaces here in Paris, there's a great chance that you had to get a loan just to buy the previous owner of that lease out of their lease. Like hundreds of thousands of euros just to buy a lease. That's not to pay, that's not, that doesn't include your deposit or your rent or anything. It's just literally to buy someone out of their lease. So that's kind of nuts. On the office share side of things, we were looking at doing something like WeWork or whatever else, but when it was me, Richard and Kate looking for space, that means you gotta get like three desks and we're looking for some privacy to have an actual like little office space for ourselves. The price adds up pretty quickly. I basically was not planning on even getting an office until later in the year, if not the beginning of 2020 but then in poking around a little bit and doing the research we got kind of lucky and found a place that was renting three desks for 450 euros each now when I first saw the listing I thought it was too good to be true because I thought it was all three desks for 450 euros I misread that and no I was definitely wrong but as we looked into it and we thought about splitting the space like with some of our friends who we're also looking for office space at the time and finally decided, you know what, like this is the right time. It's a little bit risky, it's a little bit early, but we really need this. And I think it's the right next step. One reason I say we got lucky is because of the location. Right near St. Paul, which is the back of St. Paul that I'm coming up to right now. But also one of the major things is wanting to be close to Richard. At least within walking distance, because Richard, as you may know, has two kids and a dog. He's a very busy man, and I didn't want to make him go all the way across town just to see us. And I wanted to give him space away from home where he could focus on whatever it was we were working on and not have to worry too much about, you know, his manly family duties, which he has many of. And so giving him a little bit of space is really important for me as well. And the spot we found was just down the street. Let's go there now. And there it is, right behind me. Before I go inside, what's immediately around it? We have the Temple of the Marais here, which is a Protestant church. That I, I don't know if it was built as a Protestant church or if it became one later, but. We're right next to Bastille, which is a really big square that's been under renovation for a while, and which is why I have you know, a general idea of what's going on there so regularly right now. And then if you take a hard left, 
Or if you go back the way we came and, and take a right past the office, you find yourself at Place des Vosges, which is one of my favorite squares in the city. It's beautiful. It's the oldest public square in Paris. And they say it's the oldest public square in Europe. I don't know if that's 100% true. I've done a little research. It looks like it's true, but you know, I'm just caveat there. I love this place. The fountain's on in January, a little bit concerning, but aside from that, I love this place. Being in this neighborhood situated us wonderfully between a number of delightful coffee shops, some wonderful lunch options, one of my favorite breweries in town. I mean, really, it, it is pretty fantastic. But most importantly, like I was saying, it gave us space to focus and to work, which has been really necessary during this uh, transition period that we've been going through. So let's go check it out. I'm serious too. It's like right on the corner from Plastic Boat. So close. It's in an old building, but it is kind of charming, especially the wood floors. Now this section behind me, this is kind of like a half office, half reception, mostly office though. There are two people that work in here. Next door, and an office that I'm not gonna show you because I don't know that I have permission to do so, is where a couple more people work, including the owner of the business from whom we rent. And then in here is our office. It is a little bit of a mess though, so let me, uh, you know, let me tidy up for a second. chat about the office. This, the rest of the story is going to come to you in three parts. One, what we did with the place. Two, what I wanted to do with the place. And three, why we're not going to keep the place. I feel like that's probably a pretty good way to break down the rest of this. The office itself, still a little bit echoing here you can tell because I did try to cut things down by putting foam all over the walls and really we needed to cover the walls with even more foam. Having hard floors, hard everything, the walls are all like made out of rocks makes it for a little bit more of an echoey space. So I tried to do so in a little bit of an artistic way and maximize the foam that I did buy. And uh, it had an effect, but what we really need to do is add some carpets, curtains, and maybe something to hang from the ceiling as well. So I put up diamonds, thanks to Jenica for helping me to put that together, and some art, which I put foam behind that as well to help absorb some noise. That art behind me is actually from my book, Into the Nanton, which is no longer available for purchase, but we will be redoing here in the very near future. It's pretty exciting. And then I moved a bunch of stuff in here. I didn't, I bought some new things for the office, but because there were already desks in here, we had our shelf space, the fan was here, which was really nice. I brought my printer down. I brought a bunch of my books down. I brought a lot of my random, you know, recording equipment, things like that down. I had uh, some of the podcasting equipment, like the arm and one of the microphones already. And so this was just a nice space to kind of put all of my creative and professional tools so that I knew where they were and I could use them and I could share them. So people like Kate and Zach had access to them. We have sections like where Kate can have all of her supplies for mailing stuff out. The Patreon stickers are there for patrons who've been around for six months or a year. There are different ones and we're talking about even more stuff because there are people around that have been patrons of mine for like two years. We got to figure out what we're going to, we got to send them something. So. I also wanted to build a, a, like a real coffee station over here. We have the beginnings with the Chemex and the kettle that we use from the office. So we haven't bought our own kettle. The goal is to make a coffee station, not just for us, but so that when we have guests come in for like the podcast and whatever else, we'd be able to make them coffee and then level that up, we, which we did with Vlad once by bringing in baristas from local coffee shops, you know, friends of ours to make coffee for our guests. And that way it was kind of a natural crossover. So we could plug like, hey, today's coffee is made by the Peloton or Back in Black or whoever it was that was making the coffee that day and continue to invest in the community. And speaking of Back in Black, 
KB Coffee, those guys actually offered to give us a, like a giant professional espresso machine that they had that they weren't using, which was one of the nicest gestures. And it was so kind of them. They were gonna help us bring it up here and install and everything. Like a hundred kilo machine, so like 220 pounds, which is nuts. And we were gonna do that to make espressos. Uh, but since we're giving up the office, again, had to put that on pause and now I'm espresso machine less. It's okay, I, I, I never had one to begin with. So that's that side. Then we have the game slash store side. We have all the stickers from that, as well as postcards from the postcard club, from the game. A collection of like my books, the, the amazing Space Invader art that my sister made for me off of my little Space Invader logo. And yeah, just kind of a collection of things. I bought a few lights. I wanted to buy a lot more lights. And that's kind of what brings us to what I wanted to do with this space. This side is more or less finished. We could have done a little bit more with it, but I like keeping things simple. There are some big blank spaces in here though, like the one above the mailing section, I wanted to put a little bit more into the Nanton art. The section above the mantle, I have a friend who's painting me a painting right now uh, that will be homeless, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to figure out what to do with that. But I was gonna put that above the slanted bookshelf and have Hopefully, ideally, what I really wanted was to put a, a giant TV over the mantle so that we could screen videos and put everything up and actually, you know, see things at full size to preview them, which would have been really nice. And then I wanted to put like neon lights above the doors. You've got these really funky little molding just above the doors as well. That I really thought would be fun to put like neon signs in, custom neon signs, one that would say Pigal and another that would say recording. And both of them would always be on, which would be kind of confusing, but really, I used to pretty much always be recording, so it makes sense. The bookshelves, we're put in the doors by our uh, land people. And you can see like a, the stack of pizza boxes because I was using that cardboard to hang the foam up on the walls. You actually cut squares of cardboard out, glue that to the back of the foam, and then you can use command strips to get the foam to stick to the wall. That's how I managed to get all of this up on the wall. It was quite the project. Thanks again, Jenica. So there, I kept a bunch of pizza boxes because those were what I was using for a lot of this. And there's still some foam that doesn't have cardboard on the back. But again, we kind of slowed down to wait and see what we would actually do with more of this space. I wanted to put in a whole bunch of lights. I wanted to put big curtains on the windows. I received some curtains, which were really nice and actually unfortunately too short for the windows because they're really tall windows, but they were the right size for like the smaller doors. And the idea behind that was if you put curtains up, for one, hopefully it, it dulls the sound from the street a little bit, which I'll show you the view. The view from this place is amazing. You can almost see Bastille, you can see the Temple du Marais, uh, and then you can of course see Saint Paul, Saint Paul. Uh, down the way. And I've tried to make a habit of leaning out the window and enjoying that view from time to time just because I can and I want to take advantage of it. It's been really hard not to post photos of this view, but you know, we kept it private this whole time. It's pretty successful, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the street is really noisy. We have a fire station nearby. The police go by all the time, especially with all of the protests. So because of that, we, we end up with a bunch of noise, which you can hear in the background when I'm recording, I'm sure, and then on the podcast a little bit because we've been recording the podcast in here. So I wanted to put really big curtains, like blackout curtains, so I can control the light, put in some more lighting so that like I really could get a, a handle on both the light and the sound. The bigger the curtains and the thicker they were, the more that they would help to dull the sound and also look nice, classy without like totally coating the walls in foam, which I don't want to do because I want to enjoy the walls at least as much as I can. Obviously you've got like shelving that has, you know, the, not the prettiest and holes in the wall and so forth in places, but it's got charm. What can I say? So that's what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to put in more light. I had art that I wanted to hang that I decided not to do. I'm gonna store all this stuff. I'll put some of the foam up in my room to help with recording there. And, uh, and then we'll just keep it until we go to our next office someday. Speaking of sirens, I, I thought it'd be kind of fun to have that in the background for a second. I was wrong. There it goes. The office has been great. And like I said, it's, it's provided us with some great opportunities to develop as a team and to grow. And it's going to be challenging to leave it behind for those reasons specifically. I think there's some good uh, things that are going to come out of leaving the office for now as well. But there have been a lot of questions. I think a lot of people also haven't tracked that I'm giving up the office. We talked about it a little bit here and there. And I know that since I'm not vlogging daily, it's hard to keep up with the daily movements of my life, which is another topic of conversation that we can have at another point. Basically what happened, as I kind of pointed out earlier, was that we jumped on the office a little bit earlier than we were ready to. When I stopped vlogging every day, I knew that things were going to change. I didn't know how exactly. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if uh, my viewership was going to completely disappear. I didn't know if you would stop watching if I didn't vlog every day. I mean, I knew that that wasn't going to be the case because there are a lot of people that had complained about the fact that they're like, a video every day is far too many videos per lifetime. And I get that. And so finding that balance is one of those things that I'm trying to figure out. But we got this office 
just before that transition began. And things were going really well. Things are still good, don't, don't worry, but things were going really well to the point that I felt like, okay, I can do this. I can bring Kate on like to full-time, but part-time really, because she's a student, so she can only work part-time. But I can start working towards bringing Kate on. We're gonna be able to get an office. Like we're gonna be able to start really kind of investing into this team dynamic that we can grow from, which is still the goal and still mostly true. But as you may have noticed from, I think I shared the price of this office earlier, it's kind of expensive. It's like basically paying for an apartment, which I'm very fortunate to be able to do. And I'm very, very grateful for. And I would have continued to do, but what I saw as I stopped vlogging daily was basically my revenue was kind of cut in half. And a large part of that's because when I was vlogging daily, it was really easy to pump my guide, for example, and that's where the biggest drop off was, was that my guide sales went way, way down, which is partially seasonal. There are fewer people coming to Paris right now. It's just the way that things go on the annual basis, but it's really because I, I can't continually make that new content that was going out, finding new people and encouraging them to grab my guide. And that was, it actually had become a, a very strong arm of uh, the business that was really helping to, you know, pay for stuff like this. So having that like cut by probably 70% if not more, was 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 pretty significant. The other side of it then, of course, is that my Patreon did go down a little bit and has kind of stagnated, which the nice thing is, is that I've, I, th I feel like I found the floor of where that support was. I'm really, really eternally grateful for my patrons. They've made this entire transition possible. They've kept me afloat and they've made it possible for me to figure out what I'm doing next. It's it's something that would not have been possible without them. It's not a huge drop, but you'll it, it, I, the, that, that income it went down. There are a number of people that that, that left at that point, which is fine, it's normal. There's what the what Patreon itself refers to as the churn. There's always people that are gonna be dropping out as new people come in. But also because I wasn't vlogging daily, again, much like the guide, I wasn't going out and finding new patrons because I was not able to pitch it as regularly. The thing about making only one or two videos a week is that it makes it more difficult to, to weave in those calls to action where it's like, hey, if you really like my videos, please go and support me on Patreon which please do. And I need to figure out ways to work that in a little bit more into the few videos that I do make. So between those two things, my revenue was basically cut in half over the course of a couple of months. So that caused some significant, you know, changes to need to happen. Thankfully, I'm, I'm doing okay. Like there's not an emergency, but it does require changes to happen. If I want to continue to grow and develop Kate's position with me, if I want to eventually pay Richard, which I really very much do, and then pay uh, Zach to help produce the podcast for the help that my sister gives me and for the editing that Kevin has been doing. You know, they're my priority. Those people are my priority. I want to make sure that they both have work, but also are getting compensated for the work that they're doing. And that's much more important to me than having this space, even though the space has been very, very, very good and good to me. Hold on, I'm about to run out of battery, but I have a solution for that. Then you also have like the transitions that are happening. Like the business structure that I was under wasn't very favorable and like I couldn't deduct anything and I had certain limitations. And so we're going through that transition as well, trying to reformat everything so that I fit better within the French system so that it helps with my bid, you know, for my visa renewal trying to stay here long-term, like really trying to make sure that I'm deeply invested. And so the nice thing is that I already live at kind of this low standard of living. And I, I live pretty well. Like the nice thing is I eat very well now. Thank you patrons where I used to not eat very well at all. Now I eat probably too well and I, I need to cut that back a little bit, kind of chunky down here. But the whole process of like transitioning to basically an LLC, the French version is, you know, also a, is pretty expensive. However, I was just in with the, my new accountant yesterday and we were sitting down and we were going over the whole process of closing my old business, opening the new business, going through all the paper. And it, it is an insane amount of just like silly little research things that for me would have taken days of research and I wouldn't have been remotely confident in what I came to as far as conclusions were concerned, even if they were right. And to sit down next to her and have her go, oh yeah, hold on a second, look up a couple things, be like, yep, yep, yep. And like figure things out in a matter of minutes, worth it. Just for that, knowing that I'm on the right side of the law and I'm paying my taxes, which means that I've got a better chance of staying here long-term. Fantastic, just su su super worth it. The perks to leaving the office are probably just getting out more. I don't explore this city as much as I used to. I love exploring this city. I haven't had the energy for it. I really burned out hard from the daily vlogging and needed a break, but I feel like I'm coming to the end of that need now. Don't quote me on that, because I might regret it that I said that in a month, but I'm looking forward to going and finding some new coffee shops. There's some that have opened recently that I haven't tried, finding some new bakeries, trying more croissants. Always happy to try some more croissants. Just, you know, going and seeing what's actually going on and opening out 
out there. And thanks to the strike, I'll be doing so mostly by bike and a little bit by wheel. But I'm, I don't know, I'm looking forward to getting out and just kind of reintegrating myself into Paris. I feel like this office has been a good six month hibernation, getting away from being ter too terribly social, hiding away, and I'm gonna miss having the privacy and the stability of a space like this. But I also think that it's gonna make a really big difference in just the, the ease of like making videos because I'll be out and about in Paris and I have a very hard time putting my camera away when I'm wandering the city. So there's a good chance that it means that there'll be more videos in the mix. That could be a, a, an easy benefit right there. Overall, I'm really grateful for this office. It's been a fantastic experience. I'm so fortunate that I was able to take it. I'm looking forward to getting my deposit back, but I'm also looking forward to, you know, maybe having a really big office studio space someday in the future. And I think that that's the thing. This space has been great for now. I don't know that it would work for the long haul. In the future, we, we've had some talks with some friends about what we could possibly do, but having some space where we could build a real studio, like having a real location where we could record audio, shoot some video, have meetings, be creative, paint, build stuff, tear stuff down, whatever. Very challenging to do in Paris because space is absolutely of the premium, but I think there's some really cool stuff that we could do down the line and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And for now, I'm looking forward to getting back out in Paris and you know, complaining about how it's actually pretty challenging to work for extended periods in coffee shops in this city. I'll find solutions, don't worry. In the meantime, thanks for watching and thank you for making this possible. Without you, without my patrons, without those of you that have grabbed a copy of the guide, this never would have had the chance to happen. We wouldn't have learned from it. We wouldn't have grown from it as a team. We wouldn't have had this experience. So thank you so much. It's, it's been a, quite the gift and I'm so appreciative of it. As for where we're going in the future with the business, the pizza boxes that are left unused in the corner, all of that, you know, we'll cover it in the near future, but we're packing up the office and we're gonna be getting out of here. By the time you see this video, we're already out. Our lease is up. I've paid the last month's rent and uh, we gotta pack it up. So if you're interested in possibly renting a space like this, you could always reach out. Actually, just tweet at me. Why don't you just tweet at me and I'll, I'll, I'll try to connect you with these guys and uh, they're gonna be looking to rent this space out. Maybe just one desk at a time. Uh, maybe the whole thing. I'm not really sure what they're gonna do with it, but. I can always pass you along that information. And uh, if they do post it online, I'll just link to that below the video as well. That might actually be easier, but it's a great little office. It's within walking distance of a lot of Metro stops if the Metro ever comes back online. And we're really happy that we got to be here. So thanks to our office mates for making us welcome at the same time. With that, I leave you. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever it is you are. I have no idea if I'm dropping this as a French Friday or a uh, regular Monday thing. I don't know, probably a French, I don't know what, where this is gonna fit, but you know, wherever it is in the week, I hope you're having a great one and I will see you bright and early whenever it is that the next video drops. Because who knows, this is gonna, there's a few weeks out. That was a terrible, that was a terrible, that was a terrible way to end video.